Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm here to review a fiction novel and this is Speak No Evil by Uzu Awela. Um, this is actually his third novel. This is the first one from this author that I actually have picked up to read. Um, I did see Beasts of No Nations, which was a adaption of one of his books. Um, and that was on Netflix with Idris Elba. And yeah, that, that, um, <laughs> that film was pretty traumatizing for me. So I was kind of hesitant to see if I wanted to read something from the author. I know that sounds crazy, but it was just like, I don't know. Um, but then when I read about kind of what it was about, it seemed in interesting. Um, you know, before I get too much into like talking about the book, what I will say is that I really wanted to like this book way more than I did. It started off so strong, but the book takes a turn towards the end of the book, a kind of like unexpected turn that I just, it was hard for me to get, how did we get here and why did we get here? Um, but I guess that's essentially kind of like life. All in all, I gave this three stars on Goodreads and I'll tell you why. Um, essentially it was basically because the book was so amazing and the buildup was so amazing where I wanted to know more about certain characters and just to know more and the way the book shifts towards the end and takes a, a, a drastic turn and kind of shifts narratives. I didn't really appreciate that in the sense of it wasn't as enjoyable for me to read or to follow and it kind of just seemed very left field for me. Um, but all in all, it's still a really good book. I just would have, you know, cared more had the author continued with the plot um, that it was originally set on. So we follow Miru who is about to go to college. He's already stepped into Ivy League school. He has all this going for him. And you know, he doesn't seem to ever be masculine enough for his father. And we're dealing with that whole dynamics of like, you know, he's a mama's boy and all this other stuff. And then, you know, you grow up in this religious household and he kind of always knew he was attracted to guys, but he didn't really want to accept that he was. And then his friend, Meredith, she basically makes a move on him. And, you know, when he kisses her, he realizes this is just not even just because, you know, I don't like you like that. I just don't think I have any type of attraction, you know towards females like that and you know he talks about how he's tried and he for a second he may feel like he does but he really doesn't but when it's with guys you know there's that immediate kind of attraction so chaos kind of spills over when meredith you know she's trying to support her best friend and you know she's like okay well we need to get you dating so she adds like um i forget what that tinder on his um phone and you know, from that, somehow his father finds out that he has been talking to guys, even though he hasn't even met with any guys and everything changes. Like, you know, he's sent off to Nigeria for a little bit. He's basically trying to do this conversion therapy with a pastor and all this other stuff in the months of, in the midst of all of this, even without him like, you know, trying on the app, he meets this young guy, Damien, um, where they begin a relationship. And first they began a friendship, but of course it turns into a relationship. And Damien, he's at Howard, you know, he's already had kind of like that abandonment from his family. He's already had all these moments and he's accepted the fact that he's gay. Where Nehru is still struggling with that and doesn't want to be uh, gay. So, you know, you're dealing with that relationship dynamic and Damien just seems like such a great guy and such a great kid. And I kind of feel like this was an unhealthy relationship for him to be in. Uh, which is kind of sad throughout when you're following it. Um, one of my favorite lines that stayed with me after reading the book was actually from Damien. Um, and he, he's talking about uh, like when Nero's kind of has this conflict with, you know, does he want to be with Damien or not even be with Damien, does he want to be gay? Like as if he has a choice in the situation. You know, Damien tells him the story about when he was with another guy before the sailor. And, you know, basically how the sailor was in a relationship with this girl and he always treated him like, you know, he was, had this problem. Anyways, um, Damien says, but I do know I ain't nobody's sickness. I've done that. And I don't know, something about that, I, I just never thought about thinking about myself, like how low would I, feel if I thought of myself as somebody's sickness, like a sickness, like me as a person that I'm someone's sickness. Like that really struck with me, like struck me and stuck with me, like in the sense of, wow, that's like really powerful. Like I never thought, that's just probably a blind spot of mine, but I just never thought of the fact that, you know, 
what that would feel like to feel like you're somebody's sickness like something is sick like you're sick like you know like that's heartbreaking so it's lines like that and moments like that in the story that it's so good you know and the book is just so good um but you know spoiler alert the book takes a crazy turn into police brutality which i didn't see that this going i guess i didn't read much on the book the author talks about like this is one of the topics he covers in this book but i just didn't expect it and it was kind of like wait what like i'm over here warped into this kid's life but part of me is like i guess that is you know the issue of when you are black like these are things like you know you have regular teenage angst problems right you have regular teenage problems regular kid problems regular things that you're going through but you really can't it's not just that like at any moment something completely out of the norm that's well beyond your control can happen to you and i don't know i just it was just such a weird element the way it just happened out of nowhere and then once it did happen the emphasis that was put on meredith and that whole situation with her it just it made me like just like oh i could i just want to finish this like that's how i felt at the end of the book while reading it it was like i was already so invested where i would just read the remainder of the story to figure out how this turns out but that's why i gave it three stars was because it had so many great elements leading up and you know exploring the characters and all this character building and then there's police brutality and we switched to meredith's perspective and i just didn't care for it i didn't want to hear her perspective like of this vague random change of narration um when you're already 80 percent within the book like i don't know um yeah I mean, I get why the author probably did it, but honestly, I would have, if they wanted to switch narratives, maybe from Damien's perspective, it would have been interesting because we don't even, you're left not knowing how Damien, like you don't know how Damien reacts to anything or how everything turns out. So yeah, that's like my review of the book. All in all, it was a good book. I don't regret reading it, but I just feel like the potential that this book had, it could have been a great book for me. Um, that being said, I could still see how this book's a great book to other people. It was just that switch at the end that just made me like, ah, it was okay. Um, so yeah, if you've read this book, what were your thoughts on it? And did you have similar feelings that I did? Um, anyways, love it and light, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Deuces.